Part of being a watch lover is always being on the hunt for the next watch. And one of the best parts about the hunt is finding a watch that not everybody can say they can own. What is going on everybody? Teddy Baldassar here. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at watches that are underrated and that we would love to own in our collection. And by we, I mean myself, and then also Adrian from Bark and Jack. If you've not watched Adrian's channel before, Bark and Jack is an awesome watch YouTube channel that I would definitely recommend to go check out. So. After you're done watching this video, be sure to go over there and give him some love as well. So we're gonna be looking at six watches total. We're gonna to go back and forth between myself and then Adrian. I'll let Adrian kick us off here, but guys, let's jump into it. Hi guys, I'm Adrian from Buck and Jack. Thanks to Teddy for inviting me to be part of this discussion around underrated watches. I have three watches to throw in a mix, and my first one is gonna be the Omega Aquaterra. I have a big connection to this watch because it was so close to being my first luxury watch. It's part of the Seamaster family, so it is a tool watch, it is a sports watch, and it is incredibly capable. The unfortunate thing is it's always gonna be in the shadow of its bigger brother, the Seamaster Diver 300. So let's check out a few specifications on this. We've got the Caliber 8800, which is an in-house movement. It's got a 38 millimeter wide case, and you can get a 41 millimeter wide, but I do think that is too big. The lug width is annoying, it's 90 millimeters wide. It's quite hard to find decent straps at 90 millimeters. It has a water resistance of 150 meters, so it is a very capable watch. This costs 4,800 quid, or in America, $5,500. This watch is so subtle, it looks like quite a simple watch on the outside, but under the hood, the movement inside is incredible. It's an in-house Omega Coaxial Caliber 8800, but it's Metas certified. Now, Rolex have the COSC certification on most of its watches. The Metas certification just craps all over the COSC certification. It means that Omega movements can withstand far harsher conditions and operate at a lot, lot higher accuracy. What I love about the Aquaterra is it's so clean and it's so simple. That makes it an incredibly versatile watch. You could wear this thing to the beach and equally be comfortable with it in a suit in the office. It really does deserve a lot more attention than what it gets. In a time not so long ago, well, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, this brand was considered to be on the same playing field as brands such as Rolex, Omega. The brand, Long Jeans. For years, Long Jeans seemed to have lost their way a bit. That said, they recently have made strides to return to the roots on what brought them to prominence in the first place, with the launch of many heritage designs. And one of my favorites that is my first watch here today is the Longines Railroad. So whenever I'm looking to buy a watch or recommend others to buy a watch, I always try to look for history, design, value, and versatility. And I think the Longines Railroad has points in all of these areas. The watch pays tribute to the early 1960s in the railroad grade designs of that era, primarily the Longines Railroad watch. I think the design of this watch, it really does mix simplicity with functionality. It features 12 and 24 hour markers, a clean white dial with dolphin hands and coming in with a rather accommodating 40 millimeter case that is powered by a Longines caliber L8882, a modified ETA movement. When looking at this watch, I imagine it having the potential to be an everyday watch, but also be a watch that you could dress up if you pair it with the right strap. In addition, I see these watches circulating well under $2,000 used or on the green market. And I think the only rub with this watch is its water resistance of 30 meters. And if you're somebody looking for an everyday watch that has an ability to be dressed up if worn correctly with the right strap, I think this is definitely a watch to consider and one that I think is very overlooked and one that I did consider adding to my collection in the past and would never mind owning one uh, here in the future. So my second watch is gonna be the Zin 103. This is a complete contrast to the Aquaterra, but this watch screams vintage military. It's based on vintage military pilot watches. Think about the Hoyer Brunsveer, and the Breguet Type 20. You can see that it has elements of those watches all over it. So it's powered by the automatic chronograph movement, the Valjoux 7750. It's 41 millimeters wide and it has 20 millimeter wide lugs. It's water resistant to 200 meters, which is really quite impressive for a pilot's chronograph. It costs 2,075 pounds 
or $2,130. So what I love about this watch is that it's doing what a lot of watch brands are trying to do at the moment, but it's succeeding. So a lot of watch brands are trying to take characteristics or features from vintage watches and bring them into the modern day and not executing it quite rightly. These guys, I think, have managed to pack a watch with a very busy uh, dial. Uh, it's got the bezel around the outside, so there's a lot going on visually with this watch, but everything is so well balanced. So they've managed to take these vintage features, these vintage inspirations, and bring them to the modern day. We now have a, a, a dome sapphire anti-reflective glass on the front. We have a sapphire glass on the back, a very good water resistance of 200 meters. This thing is a very, very capable watch, yet it has the air of being a vintage piece. A lot of companies are failing at this, yet Zinn have managed to execute this vintage inspired modern piece perfectly. I'm a big fan of this guy. All right, so next we have a brand that I have just overlooked on the channel for a long time, and that is Rado. And the watch is the Rado Hyperchrome Captain Cook Limited Edition. Back in 1962, Rado released their first run at this awesome Captain Cook design. Rado is just one of those brands that never really reached true mainstream prominence, and I feel they get a little bit lost being under the large swatch umbrella today. But this watch is such a cool tribute to the past and is very competitive given the price point in which it resides. The watch is limited edition and Rado only produced 1,962 pieces to pay tribute to the design's original release date, 1962. Despite the limited amount of the pieces produced, you still can find many of them on the market available today, even new. And yes, you can find the larger case sizes available as well, but as a lover of vintage, I think this one is my favorite. The watch comes in with a stainless steel 37 millimeter case, has a ceramic bezel and features an ETA C07611. One of ETA's newer movements based off of the ever so popular 2824-2. The movement is automatic and sports an impressive 80 hour power reserve. All this considered, I think you are getting a lot of watch for their $1,900 retail price point. And one that I think is a great option for those that like me, enjoy vintage inspired divers. So my third watch is gonna be a bit of a Marmite watch. A lot of people are gonna love it, a lot of people are gonna hate it. It is a Rolex Turnograph, particularly the reference 1625. It's a funny looking thing and I understand why people don't connect with it, but I love it. Let's have a look at some of the specifications. It's powered by the automatic COSC certified caliber 1570. This is the same movement as the Datejust, the 1601. It's also got the same case as the 1601 as well. So it's 36 millimeters wide and it's 20 millimeter wide lug width. Price wise, this varies hugely depending on where you get it. These photographs are actually from Theron Harris and Christian was kind enough to let me borrow them for this video. They had one going on their website. I think it was for around $3,500. It pretty much worked out to be about 2,500, 2,700 pounds. That is a great price for a Rolex, for a vintage Rolex as well. What I love about this piece is its history, its character. It's as if someone's taken the date just and just giving it some testosterone it's got that really beefy bezel on the outside and then it's still got all of that characteristics of a vintage date just all of these things combined actually make it one of my grail watches teddy i can't wait to hear what you think about my choices and thanks so much for letting me be part of this discussion and guys let me know what you think about that turnograph cheers so if i asked you think of breitling and think of a chronograph from the brand I'm assuming 95% of you would probably have the Navitimer or the Chronomat come to mind. And for good reason. Those are probably the most iconic watches from the brand, or at least two of them. That said, the watch we're gonna be looking at today is a vintage offering from Breitling that if I had owned one of their watches, I think this would be the one. The watch is the Breitling Top Time. The Breitling Top Time is certainly one of the most overlooked Breitling watches, I feel that you can find on the vintage market today. The watch was introduced back in 1964 as the brand hoped to target younger demographics with offering this really fun, but also incredibly well-crafted chronograph. These watches were really well received at the time and even made a silver screen appearance when Sean Connery sported a top time 
and James Bond Thunderball. These watches feature a myriad of different dial options and case styles that are both sleek, like their rounded case options from references like the 2002, 03, 04, and more playful options with their cushion case options, like the references 2003 with their colorful seconds hands and the fun time racing reference 2211. Considering these watches are no longer offered by Breitling, I believe it leads to them being forgotten by many, but beloved by others that are aware of their uniqueness. The best part about these pieces is that you can find some great examples under $2,000 if you really do your digging. I just think these are some of the best value that you can find in a vintage chronograph on the market, and I would love to be able to say that I own one of these things in the future. So definitely a watch that I will certainly keep my eye open for, and I think a lot of other people should as well. So guys, what is your favorite watch mentioned? Do you like my picks or do you like Adrian's picks more? And I will say, Adrian, I do like your picks. So really good job, man. And thanks so much for coming on the channel. We'll have to do it again soon. And you guys, if you are not familiar with Bark and Jack, go to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I know Adrian will really appreciate it. He does produce some really awesome content. So definitely go over there and give him some love. Also, I'd love to see comments down below about any underrated watches that you would love to own in the future. Love to see comments about that so we can have a dialogue down there. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That all really helps out the channel. Subscriptions don't really do anything anymore, so make sure you're hitting the bell icon. That's a huge help for us within YouTube's algorithm. Also check out my Instagram so you can follow me on there, as well as see the updates for the watch giveaway that we have every single month. We're giving away a Seiko SNK803 this month, so if you wanna be entered to win, be sure to be following me on there, but also fill out the form down below so you can be entered to win. And then finally, go ahead, check out my Patreon if you wanna support this new generation of watch lovers that we're trying to foster up here. Any support there would be greatly appreciated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.